cloth was just hilarious, so it's going to be kind of tongue-in-cheek, I warn you ahead of time. But I was going through different articles, listening to them on my laptop computer, and I came around across a science article about water damage to hair. Yes, water damage. Um, basically, uh, let me kind of give you extremely dumbed down layman's version of it because it was a lot of information that I had to listen to several times myself. So basically, with a hair strand, when you saturate it with water when it's extremely soaking, it actually swells the layers of your hair. You know, it lifts up your cuticle a little bit and between the cuticle and the second layer, it the water is kind of trapped and it swells your hair. And Depending on how long you have your hair soaking wet, and that swelling not only elongates your hair, which we see, when, especially when you're running your hair under your under the shower or something, it gets really long, that it causes strain because it's swollen this way and stretched out this way. So your hair is like maximum capacity and it's like, oh gosh, something has to give, something that has to give, we're about to, to break. So sometimes your hair is the most fragile state when it's wet because of that. So I make sure when I'm like, detangling my hair when it's wet that I'm doing it very very gently but to prevent your hair from that maximum water saturation rate of having possible water damage is after you do whatever you need to do in the water try to not wet your hair as much as possible um, I read or listened somewhere on an article that try to have your hair saturated for two minute maximum um, obviously um, when, when you drench your hair with water, you want to make sure you, you, you wring as much of the water out when you're done. So that way your, it may be swollen, but it's not as elongated because of the, the stretch that the water is like weighing your hair down. So just wring your hair out a little bit. And even air drying will help a little bit or drying your hair air drying preferably because it's not a direct heat source. And it will kind of um, obviously take away the lifted cuticle and the swollen membranes of your hair strain by letting the, the water leave your hair. Because what I listen to in these articles is that our hair is not like ready to just automatically soak cook water, um, obviously, um, due to porosity. Depends on what level of porosity and type of hair you have. Obviously, if you have high porosity hair, that water is going in out. I mean, there's nothing stopping it. Your cuticles are like up all the time. But if you have like, um, low porosity or normal porosity here. It takes a minute for that water to get in. So if your hair is literally soaked and saturated to the point that it's like at coat 10 with the swelling of the water in your hair as well as the elongation, it's just so much stress on your hair, then you just, just gotta be causing it. Treat your hair very gingerly. Wring your hair out. You know, use your microfiber towel, whatever you do to dry off your hair. Make sure you air dry it, you know, whatever. Because I used to just have soaking wet hair and let my hair air dry that way, and it took freaking forever. And thinking about it, just listen to the article. If my hair is soaking wet and I didn't wring it out before I got out the shower, my hair was at that critical co state status for much longer if I kind of like wrung out my hair and let it go from that state. So yeah, I just thought I'd giggle because I'm like, now water damage? You know what guys, N regardless of what you try to do, things will always cause some type of damage. It will. It's a yin and a yang to everything. It's a positive and a negative to everything. There's a cause and effect to everything. So regardless of what you do, um, it's going to be damaging. Minimal damage, maximum damage, whatever, is going to be damaging. So just keep that in mind and with a grain of salt because you got to enjoy life. you got to enjoy your hair. you got to love what God gave you, right, regardless. Sun is damaging to your hair. Does that mean you're going to never go outside? No. We understand the, the potential and we understand, hey, I'm going to live my life. <laughs> I'm going to go outside. I'm not going to be a vampire. Um, Water obviously now can cause damage to your hair. Are you not going to wash your hair? No. We understand the, da the, the potential of damage. Um, just have to go with the flow. With everything you do, there always may be some uh, um, adverse effect to it. Again, um, will you never wear your hair out? 
God forbid, because your ends are running, rubbing against your shirt and causing split ends. No, you can't always wear your hair in a bun. You wear your hair in a bun. It's pulling at your edges. You may pull your edges. You see where I'm going with this? So basically what I'm saying is don't, don't be too harsh on yourself or your hair. Just enjoy it. Do what you want to do. So the next time you come across an article to share something, some new information of what's possibly damaging your hair, don't freak out. Take it with a grain of salt. All right, guys. to show you a couple of new things I've been trying on my hair and one thing I did listen to in the article is that some things that help with the oversaturation of hair with water is putting um, a penetrating oil in your hair like coconut oil kind of helps uh, take up the space and room from water molecules taking up underneath the your cuticle area of swelling so that's a good tip and also they said conditioner can also help with mitigating um, you know the space for water, water molecules to get swollen in your hair strands so with that said I just wanted to show you a couple of oils and conditioners I've been using so right here um, this was a free tester I got from a conditioner um, it was a conditioner repairing mask um, to be honest with you I don't even remember if I liked it or not so because I can't remember I probably won't purchase the full one I'm starting right here Cantu also an another intensive repair deep treatment mask um, I really did like this it had great slip and I felt my hair was really moisturized afterwards um, I don't know if you guys notice these little tubs in um, Walmart, but they're like one minute hair mask. And the one I got, of course, is coconut extract. And you know what? I really wasn't impressed. It didn't really do anything to my hair. I didn't feel like it moisturized it. So I'm going to pass on this next time. Um, this um, is three oils I've heard really good things about. I've always, I have used olive oil before and castor oil, but the one I haven't used is almond oil, so it's a mix of three, and I enjoyed it. Um, it was really light, and it sealed my hair really well after I put my um, leave-in conditioner in. So um, I got this out of town, so um, because of that, I won't repurchase again. Um, now that it's spring around the corner, I'm going back to coconut oil. And one of my favorite YouTubers, they uh, recommended this brand, Jericho K-Pack Conditioner, and it's um, a light protein. And you know with low porosity hair, protein usually is a no-no. Um, it took me a moment to use this. I got this off of Amazon, and the consistency was really watery, and it definitely didn't moisturize my hair. Um, so I can only use it like twice a month um, if I felt like my hair was just getting a little too moisturized to kind of build up that protein in my hair. And I do feel like I strengthened it. I just think the bottle is just too big for me to be able to use in a reasonable amount of time. I don't know if that even makes sense. But it drives me crazy to have a bottle of conditioner in my shower for months. And I feel like I didn't even break it. <laughs> break the top layer of using it so yeah as a protein it's okay but I, I use other proteins that I like better so I won't repurchase that and last but not least is the main choice um, daily hair dressing and I did use all of it it's like a really really thick butter um, I'm sure it's based off of shea butter it was so thick that I one I couldn't use it as a hair dressing or a moisturizer it was just too heavy for my hair and two, I can't even use it as a sealant because I felt like it dried my hair out, the moisture that I left in my hair. I just felt like, I don't know, it just it just didn't feel right. So instead of using it on my hair with such a nice thick butter, I used it as a body lotion and it worked really well. Now, because I repurposed it, will I repurchase it again? No, I'm not gonna to buy a hair butter and use it for a body butter. But um, that's how I was able to use up the product even though it didn't work for me in my hair. I do not like wasting products, so I had to repurpose, and that's what I did. It smells really good, though. And I've been on a, this is totally random, <laughs> but I've been on a Korean skincare kit lately. I just love Korean skincare. If you're interested, down below, let me know, and I will love 
definitely to do a video about that for you because I have many, or not many, but I have several Korean skincare um, products I use. So these are sheet masks. Um, I also got this all from Amazon. Um, they're different ingredients. One main ingredient that does something particular. Um, moisturization, hydration, whatever, depends on that ingredient. But um, it's a sheet mask, very hydrating. You leave it on for about 15 minutes, take it off. Whatever's left as a residue on your face, you do not rinse off. You let it soak in your skin overnight as a moisturizer. And when you wake up the next day, I tell you, my 41-year-old skin feels fabulous so yeah guys i just wanted to quickly jump in and include this in the hair video this week and like i always say be you stay true be naturally seen